All right, ladies and gents, so today we're going to go ahead and we take a look at section 4.3, making production decisions. We're going to answer these eight questions as we um, read pages 86 through 92. So the first one, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, the first question asks, what is marginal product? So you can read on page 87 the definition of marginal product. It says it's the change in output generated by adding one more unit of input. So basically what that's taking a look at there is that as a business is adding more inputs, like more employees, more tools, whatever that might be, um, what is our change in output? What is the change that can be produced? And if you're analyzing that, you're taking a look at what is called marginal product. Now, marginal product allows us to see something that is called the law of diminishing returns. And I'm going to show you a chart that will kind of show that idea of um, diminishing returns here. So what we have here is a production schedule for a fictional pizzeria, which we will call Ray's Pizza. Let's go ahead and take down um, this chart, this oven chart, for number two. So our input for raised pizza is going to be ovens. So it's one through seven ovens. And then our output is going to be the amount of meals per hour, ranges for 100, uh, down, uh, goes up, and then it goes back down to 100. And then our marginal product is going to take a look at the marginal product, the difference uh, if you add an input uh, in the number of meals per hour. So let me, let's go back and relate ovens to meals per hour. So you can see with one oven, you have 100 meals per hour, two ovens, 250 meals per hour, three ovens, 450, and so forth. But now let's go ahead and take a look at marginal product. So marginal product is going to take a look at the difference between output when we add input. So as we go from one to two ovens, uh, we're going for 100 meals per hour to 250 meals per hour, so our marginal product is going to be plus 150. When we added that extra oven, we got 150 more meals. As we go from two ovens to three ovens, we went from 250 to 450, which is an extra 200 meals. And you can see the difference as you go down that column there with marginal product. But the important thing is when you look at this, you can see what's called the law of diminishing returns. Because as we're, having, as we're getting more and more ovens, actually, our marginal product is going to start falling because we're just going to start getting too many ovens. Too many of those, those, ov those first few ovens were very valuable, but then after that, they start getting a little less valuable. So let's take a look. So as you can see, from one oven to two ovens, and from two ovens to three ovens, our, our marginal product is going up. So at that point, we have what's called increasing marginal returns. Marginal returns are going up. Those first few ovens are very, very valuable to the business. Now, as we go from three ovens to four ovens and four ovens to five ovens, we're still going to see marginal product going up, but it's not going up by as much. So those ovens are not quite as valuable. And then as we go from five ovens to six ovens and six ovens to seven ovens, then you start to see um, an actual what's called decreasing marginal returns. So from three to four and four to five, you had what's called diminishing marginal returns, where the return is still positive, but it isn't growing. It's actually diminishing. So you have diminishing marginal returns. And then finally, uh, from when we go from five to six and six to seven, you're going to start seeing what are called negative marginal returns, where we have way too many ovens. Maybe those ovens are getting in the way of um, employees or whatever it might be. Just too many ovens, marginal returns start to fall there. Okay, so those are, uh, when you look at the law of diminishing returns, there really are three stages. You have increasing marginal returns, you have diminishing marginal returns, and then you have negative marginal returns. So marginal returns are going to be going up, with those first few, in this case, ovens. And then the returns start diminishing because the ovens become less valuable. And then finally, you have too, way too many ovens, and you have what's called uh, negative marginal returns there. All right, so go, let's hit number uh, three through five here. So it says, for three, with the oven chart, at what oven levels do we have increasing marginal returns? So that's from one oven to two ovens, and two ovens to three ovens. For number four, with the oven chart, what levels do we have diminishing marginal returns? It's from three to four, and from four to five, because you start to see uh, those, the marginal product start falling a little bit there. 
for number three, the marginal product was rising. All right, then for number five, with the oven chart, at what levels do we have negative marginal returns? And the marginal returns become negative as you go from five to six, six to seven. You just have way too many ovens, and um, that ended up really hurting your marginal product there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get to six through eight here. So if you turn the page to page 91, okay, 91, um, we'll look at fixed costs and variable costs. So let's go ahead and go number six, uh, compare and contrast fixed versus variable costs. So fixed costs will not change when output changes. So no matter how much, if, you, if you're a business, no matter how much you, how much you make, you're still going to have to pay the same amount in fixed costs. If you make nothing, if you make a ton, you're still going to have to pay the same amount of fixed costs. Okay, these costs do not change when output changes. A good example might be rent. Rent is a good example of a fixed cost. Because what's going to happen there is the business, no matter whether they're selling a thousand units or zero units, they're still going to have to pay the rent on the building that they are producing out of. So rent is a good example of fixed costs. Variable costs, on the other hand, will change as output changes. So whether you make more of the product or less of the product will actually change your costs when you're looking at variable costs. Okay, they do change as output changes. Um, some good examples there would be raw materials, wages. Um, wages are a especially good example because if you're making a lot, you're going to have to hire a lot of people to make the stuff. And then that's going to go ahead and push your wages up. You're also going to need raw materials to make that stuff. And so as you're making more, you're going to have to pay more for raw, raw materials. You're going to have to pay more for wages. So you have um, a couple of variable costs there. So for number seven, one example of a fixed cost, one example of a variable cost, we already hit that, uh, but a good example of a fixed cost would be rent, and a good example of a variable cost would be wages. And then finally for number eight, what is the name of the sum of fixed and variable costs? And you'll see it on page 91. Fixed plus variable costs are equal to total costs. Okay, total costs is that sum of fixed and variable costs. All right, so I'll uh, go ahead and check and make sure you did these tomorrow. I hope you have a fantastic evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.